佛，今天走不动。他们要说要扶师傅，我说不要扶，扶的看起来太老了，找不到男朋友。<笑>三年以前，哥他说我那一年一定会结婚，有没有记得吗？哎呦我，我越来越老了，等不到那个人，奇怪。啊，啊，好，大家好。大家好 ，Everybody OK <笑>。你们还活着吗<笑> ？You are still alive. <笑> OK <笑>。跳舞太多了，今天走不动。<笑>你们怎么起来呢？啊 ？How how can you wake up this morning? Okay. Do you wake up or you crawl up? <笑>你们醒起来或是爬起来了？哎呀，真的好累。不过你们也是很很好哈，大家很好哈。So， 我讲英文哈，是不是？ Okay. <laughs> so what should I say now? What should we say? So, did you meditate well? Yeah. Good experience. Yes. Went very high. <laughs> wow. Today I did not go very high. I went to the second level only <laughs> because I have only two hours to sleep. <laughs> First, first hour go to the first level. Second hour go to second level. <laughs> Same with all the staff members. <laughs> I had to even wake them up. They supposed to go at eight o'clock. At about half past eight, they still snoring. <laughs> Maybe at the second level or something. I have to wake them up. And after they, I woke them up. I sleep again. <laughs> When the second level, just to check out somebody's, somebody's、uh, past lives. Oh, it's terrible. Awesome. Better we don't know our past life, huh? Because sometimes when we know our past life, it is very frightening. I don't like to go to the second level and look at the past lives of people, even myself. Because most most of you people are having. The past life concerning with me also, yeah. So if your past life is very terrible, <laughs> you can be sure that I wouldn't feel good <laughs> looking at it, you know, as a witness or as somebody who concerned with you. We were just sitting in the car.、Mm. You see,、uh, in the car, I was just talking to one of the attendants about ah about past life. We are talking.、Uh, we're telling you about the story that you you like to listen. Everybody likes to listen the past story, you know the story from the past and all that. You know, see your past lives. I say it is no good. I don't recommend it. And mostly, when you see some people's past life or your own, it's better not to tell, except when you know the person next to you. You know, have some very. Terrible confusion, and you know. So sometimes you want to solve the conflict, so you have to look into the second life, second world record, and see what is that.、Uh, that person have a lot of doubt, and so you have to clear it for him. But to look into the past record is is a a very terrible ah、uh, event journey. It is no good.、Mm. So like today, I had to look into someone's records, you know, 
And some, that someone would involve many other ones, you know. It's not easy that you look into somebody's one record and then you see no one else involved around. And that brings you into many other connections. And each one of them would offer you the whole lot of <laughs> troublesome <laughs> past lives. And then it sometimes is not very good for you. When you're looking, not when you wake up. When you wake up, then of course, because of our power of practicing the Kuan Yin method, we probably can immediately erase the depressing feeling or any kind of negative feeling which resulted from the, uh, you know, the past life effect. Sometimes, most, mostly, the past life is very gruesome. Is that the word? Gruesome? You know, terrible, right? Awful, yes. And uh, full of uh, uh, depression and suffering. Because, as you know very well, our earth has not been very um, positive before, right? more destructive nature and also have a lot of killing and bloodshedding and slavery and suffering among the earth inhabitants. So we would be one of them. Yeah, either we are the killer or the killed <laughs> and the, you know, the, the slave owner or the slave, yeah? Either or no good, because we will be connected with each other in this past history, and whatever happened to one would affect the other as well. In the past decades, past generation, past, um, yeah, era of our earth history is mostly very dark. Yes, if we are the earth inhabitant, we should, we, we would have gone through all this kind of happenings, which is very difficult for us to forget. And should we be able to remember, it would give us tremendous suffering and uh, depression that we don't want to even know about it. That's why it is the blessing from the most intelligence that we don't remember our past lives. Even I myself, sometimes I have to go back into the past in order to check out something for the present, when it's really absolutely 99.9 .9 necessary, <laughs> then I would do that. Only very, very rare occasion. I never like to do that. And it's not necessary to do so, because we have enough to do in the present. Sometimes it is also very healing to go back into the past and to know what you have done, uh, what is wrong with you, in order to heal yourselves in some uh, corner of, of our psychic being. Not the soul, huh? The soul is never sick, never had gone through any past, present or future. So actually this kind of healing is also good only for our mind, our body and our psychic feeling. Still, I consider it's not bad, but it's not a high level of healing. You see, that's why most of the time we should not or we don't have to. Or the Master would try to not to let us know much, too much about our past lives in order so that we struggle, yeah? We fight with this present situation in order to grow above it. Instead of just using very, a psychic way and then healing yourself and then feel good and then finished. You know, because sometimes struggling and fighting spirit is also also very good for us. Yeah? Make us strong, strong. But only in, in some very, very rare occasion, 
that some people are too weak, you know, to fight or something like that, then maybe the higher intelligence would help them to understand their past lives in order to accept the present or uh, the the present, yeah, the present time, or to uh, to uh, I see um, balance some of their very uh, pressure kind of feeling in their life in order to help them ease out the transition from past, present, and to the future. Otherwise, most of the time, it is better that we struggle, yes, within our might in order to grow stronger. Because uh, in that case, we fight with the knowledge and power of the soul, see, not with the uh, mind, yes, not with the knowledge of written documents and uh, lower understanding. So we fight with the power of the soul if we do not know the past, if we do not know with the mind, you know, we still know anyhow, you know, the soul probably know everything if he wants to know, but then don't have to know with the mind, and then we struggle to go over this, what we call the, the evil cycle, yeah, that we back and back and back and back and back again. Many of us, most of us, coming back to this life again and again and doing always the same thing, similar thing. Like if last life you sell houses and this life you sell plastic tents, perhaps, <laughs> Uh, last life you sell horses, this life you will aim to sell cars, <laughs> to sell cars, a similar thing like that. And last life somebody kill you, and this life you still feel like uh, somebody chase you all the time or have a very frightening feeling, have nightmare about being murdered, or sometimes actually being murdered. And the murdering person who murder you is probably the same one. <laughs> or maybe it is your turn that you murder him <laughs> instead. So now this is called the evil circle, and it's very, very difficult for everyone to get out of this, because the history, we say history, keep repeating again. That is true. And that is it's very true for my own knowledge. I, I know this. I, can, I see this. I'm not talking because I read it from books, but I've seen that very clearly. My own personal experience. As we see into the past lives of different people, or maybe ourselves, we see the pattern keep repeating, 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 and repeating. That's what we call karma, you see? the impelling force that keeps us going back again, again and again, and doing the same thing, same thing over again. It's just like the highway, the express highway. If you don't find the exit, if you miss it, and then you keep going again and again in the circle, you have no choice. No choice, absolutely. Therefore, we have to struggle with the power of the soul through meditation and sincere determination to break above this cycle of negativity. That is when we call uh, liberation in one life. Yeah, and that is what we promised in Guan Yin initiation. And it is the only way to do it, to break this circle. In many lifetimes, we have a lot of uh, work to do, a lot of connections, and mostly we keep coming back again and again to the same connections and the same work. And that's the boring thing about it. That's why most of the time, after we uh, are interested in knowing our two selves, are initiated into the Guan Yin uh, method, 
we begin to feel bored with life. Even though we work harder probably than before, we react quicker and we uh, have more initiative, more intelligence to tackle any kind of, uh, uh, I say, um, obligation that is given to us, but still we don't feel interest, in, interested so intensely in having a succeed or success or failure. We just do it and we would probably do our best and we probably will succeed most of the time. But we don't have any interest to, to, to make it a life and death matter. You know, whether we gain or lose, it's, it doesn't matter that much anymore. And we, we earn money easily, probably, easier than before, but we have not interested in money. Uh, that's why. Because then we will see in the whole, we see the whole circle of this repeating, repeating and repeating. And finally, our subconscious realize that, oh, it's boring, you have done this before, <laughs> many times over. Just a little change the color and you cheat yourself. Like last time you sell horses and this time you sell cars. <laughs> because now we drive cars, we don't <laughs> drive horses anymore. Something like that. Or maybe last time we sell the camels, yeah, camels in the desert to bring milk and now we probably drive a big truck to deliver milk for people. But what's the difference, you know, what's the difference? Last life probably we live in desert and this life we probably live again in some of the hot country. Yes, something like that. So there is not much different in varieties, the lives of the people in this earth. Only because we are not enlightened, the people who are not enlightened will not realize this. And they don't know why, they have to keep pursuing trying their best to earn this money or to grasp this position despite all their health or all their, I say, risk of life and everything. They just have to do it, just because they have not yet find the exit way from the highway. When they find the exit way, they just immediately go out. It's boring. They know, oh God, I've been fighting all this time just because I want to find this exit. So the enlightened people are the same. Even though we still live in the society, do our best to serve our family, our, you know, country, but we lose the in interest of gain or, or loss, of uh, fighting for glory, for self, uh, I would say, uh, benefit and gain. That is when we don't have any more ego. That is when we truly can offer ourselves and our talent to the world. In the old time, people chose this kind of person to be their king or their national advisor. Nowadays it's different, <laughs> it's different. Most of these people, anyhow, if they're still living in this world, they don't want to mess about with politics or uh, to kind of governmental affair because it's very difficult to find a good person to whom you would, could give your advice. Even if you give good advice, the person must be intelligent enough to listen to you and must be really very pure and good to serve the people in order to listen to your advice. Many of uh, not not all of them, you still can find some good politicians, but yeah, we talk about politics, terrible. I don't, but I don't worry. My, my lifespan is very safe, <laughs> very long, <laughs> according to astrology. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I have a look at it again. Oh, it's still very long, <laughs> so I can talk. <laughs> mm. 
What I mean is, uh, if any leaders, many leaders of many countries are truly devoted to their idea of developing their country, helping their people, then any of the sage advice would be uh, avail uh, would be available. Would be available also. Otherwise, it's no use. No use. Mm. Today, people fight with each other just to get into. Uh, say, office, uh, governmental office. This is not much uh, place for the good advice of any wise person. <coughs> oh, let's go to our story. It would be better. <laughs> Talk about politics. It's tired. Where were we before? Huh? Yeah, it's connected with each other. But then I would rather talk about our own story, you know, more close to the theme than go too much uh, around. Where were we before? Before the politic. <laughs> huh? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 okay. Most of our lives are repeating, repeating, repeating like that, yes. Therefore, we get, after enlightenment, we suddenly feel, you know, and we feel bored, yeah, bored with the, the things that we used to treasure, yeah, like diamonds, gold, <laughs> money, position, fame, and profit, things like that. We don't desire any of them, you know. They come to us all the time. Most of the time they come easy, but we don't bother, we don't want, you know, unless it's necessary or unless we can use it to help someone else. Yeah. But that doesn't mean we, we don't earn money, right? I, I earn a lot of money too, you know, huh? <laughs> but then the money we can use for a good, good thing. Now, in order to break this habit of the past, there's, the best way is to get initiation into the Kuan Yin Method, as you know, yeah? Because it's easy to talk to you now because you have some experiences already in your life. Huh? How bored you get with the fame and profit and glory, which meant a great deal to you, which meant life and death to you. Now, even your life, you do not bother that much. If God still wants you to live, you live. If God wants to take your body away, take it away, right? You don't bother that much anymore. Everything that is so important and so very uh, precious to us before begin to just be as they are, you know. Diamond is just a piece of another stone, <laughs> a little bit more pretty stone, but stone is stone, <laughs> nothing more than that. For example, huh? gold is just another kind of metal, right? <laughs> a little bit shining, <laughs> but and that's it, that's all there is, so we don't bother. Mm. So that's why whatever I told you before initiation or after initiation is all the truth. Yeah. And I also gain from personal knowledge, because we both practice the same method, right? <laughs> so whatever you know, I also will know. Whatever I know, you will know. I mean, sooner or later quicker or slower, it depends on your intensity in the race, yeah? Mm -hmm. How fast you want to run and how much power, how much of fuel you get in your body or how much power you believe you have. Actually, we have a lot of power laying, sleeping, but we don't use them. And we complain, the Master don't bless us and oh, uh, sometimes we want to do this and that and we don't have enough. You have a lot, you have everything, many things you can do, many things you can do. Whatever I did, well, for example, painting, designing clothes and all that, I didn't do them before, I didn't learn them before. I didn't learn to compose music before, but you like them, no? This is no, no less professional than anyone else, okay? Because I have them, and when the time comes, when I push myself, when I need to do it, then I do it. I don't do it every day or when not necessary, but I do it. For example, last night, the clothes I wear, 
I didn't want to decide. I didn't think about it. I just think, oh, I just wear anything, anything. And then some of the people say, oh, no, Master, it's no good. Uh, it's New Year and thousands of people will be there. You have to dress nicer and all that. And then I was thinking, oh, but I don't have a nice dress. So what to do? Okay, I design it. And it doesn't take over three to five minutes to draw it out, you know, very easily, because I'm pushed to do it. I don't have so much time to think anymore. And the music also, music also. I made all this music not because I wanted to make them or I purposely intended to make them and I think about them long ago and now my dream come true and things like that. <laughs> this is not true. I wrote it just uh, one or two days in a very musical mood. You know why? Just one of the, the close uh, disciples just left me, suddenly left me. <laughs> no reason, nothing. And I felt a little bit sad, you know. I felt that if he went back to the world, you know, he would be just nothing for him. Because many people left me and, and have to come back again. And also, in a, even if they don't come back, they're in a bad shape, you know. And then it worried me again, you know, make me trouble. Not that if they left and they're happy and married and uh, live happy ever after together, it's fine with me. But mostly not. It just make me more trouble. And I know that already. I said, oh no, not again, oh no, not again, please. <laughs> History keep repeating. You should have learned from the next, from the previous, you know, take over, I say, no, take, take liver, I say, me walk away, <laughs> walk away, instead of, of, of walking in their footsteps again and then be suffering. Because I know I'm good for them. I know very well that, except me, no one in this world truly loves them the way I do. Doesn't matter if I scold them or I treat them nicely, it is only from love. I will tell you why scolding is also love. i tell you next minute when I finish this, so remind me, okay? Because it's very important to tell you, very, very important. Uh, just now I remember it, okay? Because I never told you before, so must remind me, okay? So what were we now? What were we doing now? I <laughs> see. I had to come out. Mm, what was it? Okay. So because of that person just left, I feel very sad. You know, not not very sad, but kind of frustration again of something déjà vu. You know, already seen it before, and then it happened again. Oh no, not now! I am so tired. I'm busy. I just want to rest mentally, physically, and, you know, do some other thing. I'm so busy with many other things and so much pressure now. And then, let's say he left. Oh, it's not the time. I say, you can leave another time, but not now. Thing like that, you know, and I feel, oh, everybody just, just be cheated willingly or unwittingly by illusion. And there's nothing more to that. Therefore, suddenly this song comes out. You know, I wrote that for that person. And then the other song in connected with it also come out together. See what I mean? And all together is twelve because some of the of them are translation into Vietnamese and Chinese. So it comes just naturally. So I wrote any song in a few minutes. It's no for premeditating or arrangement because of that, you see? Because the situation that pushed me into this, so I can do that. The same with painting. <laughs> a painting. <laughs> I never thought of painting. I'm a most lazy person. I'm not creative, nothing. <laughs> I just do what is there and what is that, what necessary in that situation. For example, like painting. You know where do the painting come from? I never painted before and I was the worst in painting class. My teacher always probably tell me, Ah, don't bother to waste the color. I just give you the <laughs> the point anyhow, the mark. <laughs> I save the color and the paper. <laughs> ah, you know, I remember the first painting I ever made. I don't think the teacher ever told me that, but probably I wasn't a very confident painter in our class. You know, we, we learn painting in our class, right? Yes. I could paint a little bit of flower and that, but it's to my thinking is not good. So, so the first painting I 
I draw about the people, it's something like this, like uh, two sisters, you know, and one fell down from the bicycle, and the other one immediately went out to help her, to, to, to pull her back on her, uh, to her feet, right? So that is the title, say, Helping One Another, <laughs> thing like that. That was the first painting I ever made, the so-called so -called painting in high school. And, and the person I draw in the, leg, uh, the picture uh, has no movement, <laughs> grace, just like this. You know what I mean? You know the robot, the machine person? It looked like that. One, the one fell out, fell like this. <laughs> and the other one who pulled pull him out, pulled like this. You know what I mean? <laughs> I have no painting talent, that's what I meant to you. Probably, but my teacher didn't say anything, but to me it's terrible. I know I could not ever paint. But then, when we were in Pingtung, <coughs> we lived together <coughs> next to the, uh, the river, and there are so many stones there. And at that time we, were, we liked uh, that place very much. <coughs> that place called Hao Cha is very far away from it all. You have to walk about half an hour or so to reach that destination. And before that, there's a road you can uh, drive car, but only mountains and mountains and river, nobody. Uh, so we love that place so much. I never wanted to go out of that place. You know, some of our laziness sometimes, I like to retreat and don't want to see people. At that time, I did not uh, have that many disciples like now. We have a about 150 uh, or 200 uh, monks and nuns living with me. So we just went there for a retreat and summer. And then, oh, we liked that place so much, I didn't want to go out. So if I don't want to go out, I have to think of a way of making money. <laughs> and then we see the stones all over places, so I say, ah, yes, that's right, I paint the stone. <laughs> and make them become like a paper, I say, pressure, huh? Paper waiter, yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. And then I paint one or two or three. Probably the paint they bought for me are not suitable. It takes a long time to dry, three days. At that time we were naive about everything, you know, all the monks and then I run around, idiot. <laughs> Even buy the paint, you didn't buy the correct one. Three days every time to dry. So I have to paint one side of the stone, which is round like this, paint one side, uh, write something and then wait for three days later to turn around, paint another one. And sometimes I paint too thick, even three days after I turn around, it's stick to, <laughs> to the paper or the, the cloth, and they make trouble for me. So I say, uh, too troublesome, to earn money this way, take too long. <laughs> and then I was, then, and then and there, I was thinking of painting in a larger dimension. Therefore, I can be more freely, you know. I can make a longer stroke or more painting and throw all over the place, no problem. That's where I began to paint the picture. And first we saw the stones, it's okay, it's so very fast and very well, and we, we could not supply all of them, because first I tried to teach other monks to paint, just like me. Every group paints some stone, but later they paint <laughs> so terribly <laughs> that I don't dare to sell them to people, you know, there's no quality. Therefore, uh, only me, I'm the sole bread earner <laughs> of the 200 household family. <laughs> uh, so I said, it's too tiring, every time I is on three days, it takes too long time, you know, how can I feed 200 people every three days, one stone or three? Uh, too much trouble. And then we sold the stone, but then it's, it's so, so fast, so later we don't sell them anymore, we have to bring them back for Because many people want them and we don't have enough, so we have to uh, kind of... <laughs> I even lose the business, I have to put the money out and, how I say, buy them back again. <laughs> That's terrible. So I begin to paint on canvas, you know, bigger uh, place so that I can, you know, be a little bit more free in my action. That's when painting began, see? Same with, uh, same with designing clothes, when I have to go to a very big party or to see sometimes important government person and things like that. And I don't want people to, to have allergy about religion, you know, because I myself don't believe 
in the differences between religions. Therefore, if I keep wearing Buddhist clothes, and some of the Catholic and the Christian, they see it, they say, oh, I don't want to go to her party. I don't want to hear her even. She just wants to convert me into Buddhism. Before I even open my mouth, they would do that. You see, and I cannot work with all people when I represent only one corner of the truth, or one corner or one color. You understand what I mean? Buddhism originally represents all color, all color, and all, all, um, I would say, all pervasive. But later, you know, because we make into different sections, Buddhism, Catholicism, and so we make trouble. So I cannot stay there, you know what I mean? And represent the, the, the thing that is already not accepted by the whole thing. People never accept one religion anyhow. Even Christian, even Catholicism, nobody accept one. So they fight among each other all the time. So if I keep wearing the Buddhist tradition, I will be limited my myself, you see. Therefore I have to design some dress that it looks also like a practitioner, I mean, dignify, and also mixing with the mass a little bit. So that's how everything begins, yeah? And now you know. So I tell you all this because I want you to know you have so much talent within yourself when a situation comes or when you keep pushing yourself, something like that. You will know how much you have. The same with wisdom. If you don't talk to other people, don't let them ask you questions. You never know how much you gain during this everyday meditation. You think you gain nothing. Sometimes you do, many of you do, because you have experiences and your life becomes smoother. And apart from that, some people are asking me, Master, but I want wisdom. I don't have any wisdom. I see light, I hear sound, I, my life better, I feel very good, but where's my wisdom? I want to see my wisdom. <laughs> yes, your wisdom only comes when you use it. If today you have not been here and expect me to come, all these have not come out, you know? Even though I have them inside, but I don't have use of them. I don't talk to you, so you never know what I know. See? I don't also know what I know. Except for whatever you have, you must use it in order to realize that you have it. See what I mean? Huh? Even physically, mentally, and intellectually, we all have to use our treasure inside in order to realize what we have. Otherwise, don't sit there and complain, Master, I don't have wisdom. Talking nonsense. You have to talk to people, yeah? And then realize how high a level you have rise now compared to yourself before, uh, compared to that person who has not been initiated. Doesn't matter what position or what religion he belongs to, what kind of rank he has in that religion. No matter. The higher you talk, the better you know the, how wise you are. Before, if you talk to this high ranking, kind of uh, religious figure, you, you fear, you bow to them, eh? you shake your hand, you know, trembling. Now you talk to them, eyes to eyes, face to face, you see how you have progress. No, no, so? Okay. If you want to know your wisdom, try this method and let me know how you feel. <laughs> okay, now I tell you about the, um, the scolding method. Many of the people, love sweet talking, but don't love scolding, that's for sure. That is our psychological being, and I understand that very well, and I also don't like scold people, I don't like to be scolded also. But most of the time when I'm guess, I, I was scolded, I, I never dislike or hate people. Uh, maybe I feel a little sad that I'm not good, but I have never remembered, never in my life I remember that uh, the boss or the mother or father or sister or anybody or even lower than me, the younger sister, brother, cousin, scold me. I never ever had a memory that I hated that person or feeling repulsive or feeling any bad feeling against that person except a little sadness in myself, sometimes not even that. Sometimes I feel like, uh, like it, it doesn't affect me at all. You know, not that, not that I, I, I feel ignorance or indifference, I just don't feel that this is so important, you know what I mean? 
since ever since I'm young, I remember always like this up to now. But most of us, many of us, when people scold us, we feel resentment, you know, resentment, and that is no good for us. That block all the energy and make trouble. Now, regarding a person who practices very well or a master who scolds us, we also don't like. Yes, but we don't know. That's even stronger than love. Because I just tell you an example. I was just talking in the car with a person who was next to me because she sometimes gets scolded, you know, and probably if you wanted to go back home and just be a housewife. <laughs> so I tell her, you don't know. You don't know. When I scold you, it's better for you than when I love you. Because when I scold one person in the whole universe, only that person is with me. I will forget everyone else. Is that not so? And when I love someone, I could even have think of someone else at the same time. Just like, I just say an example, when you love your wife, even when you're in bed embracing each other, kissing each other, you're not always concentrating on that. Is that not so? Yeah, because you can, it's not that you, you deliberately um, distract it, but because it is not that strong. The force of love is not that strong. Yeah. Even when you're in bed with your wife or your husband, sometimes you think, Oh my God, I lost 200 today. Oh, you know, oh my boss, he was so lousy to me. Oh, oh the, the, the neighbor girl is more beautiful, something like that. Yeah, yeah, really, really. Isn't that not true? Is that not true? Because the force of, the force of, of, uh, of physical love and mentally love and the mind level is not that strong. Not as strong as hatred, I'm sorry to say. That's why most of the negative power in this world have more firm grips on mankind than the positive power. You see how many people practice doing good things, eating vegetarian, compared to the, 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 the rest. How many people doing good things? And how many people doing bad things? Or at least don't do bad things, but only being selfish, doing things for themselves. How many? Can you compare? Huh? You know the percentage of good <laughs> is very small. Despite all these religions, all these good doctrines from Jesus, from Buddha, from Mohammed, from whomever you name it, mankind are still the way, mostly the way they used to be, huh? thousands of years ago. Just because today we are a little bit more civilized and we have television, newspaper, we cannot just kill people and get away with it. People will make a mess out of it, so everybody will know about it. So we fear a little bit more. So we are a little bit more civilized. But still, you look, murdering is still going on. War is still going on. All petty cases. Huh? Now, that's why the force of negative, like the force of hatred and the force of anger and all that, is stronger. When you anger, you forget anything, anything, even your position your kingdom, your mother, your father. That's why in anger sometimes people can kill. You know what I mean? Kill even their relatives or their loved ones, their friends, their wife, their husband or their children because they lost all control. They only know their anger and the person that they aim their anger at. Nothing more, nothing more. Because the force of negative is so strong. Hmm? Therefore, even when they hate each other, they keep coming back again and again, life after life, or they chase them from one corner of the earth to the other corner of the earth in this life in order to kill that person or to harm them, because the force of hatred is so concentrated and un undilutable. So, now, let's come back to the scolding thing. When a master scolds you, okay, because the Master still loves you anyhow. And that love is also undilutable because it's from the whole universe, not from her personal self. Therefore, even though when she scolds you, love is still back in. You understand what I mean? The anger is still inside that love. It's not concentrated on one corner of the anger, but it's inside the whole universal love. Now, but when, when the Master scolds you, or oh, angry with you, only one, you and the Master alone. No one else exists in between you. 
when I love you, I still can think of someone else, you know, like when I caress you on your face or when I shake your hand because you want me to touch you, or when I look at your eyes, I still can think of something else. But when I scold you, no one else is there. Is that not true? I have to talk in a mundane level in order so that you know what is a powerful thing is that when a master scolds you. All the power is embedded in that and then put it onto you. You know what I mean? Therefore you change very fast. But it's very tiresome for the master as well as for the disciple. Just like a, a martial art teacher, sometimes when he has to use the best, you know, the most forceful, the last resort, they call it the last dance, Jue Jiao, then he had to use the whole of his energy in order to win the opponent, and he cannot use that all the time. You know, understand what I mean? Because that would tax all his being, all his energy, and all his, uh, how to say, talent and skill to win the last battle. He used that only in emergency, only when nothing else works. It's very complicated to be a master. No words can explain. But it is very sure that the master always right. It doesn't matter what the master does, it's always right. It's my own experience. And also experiences of many people around, you know, the close associates. Some of them know a little bit, some know a little bit. <laughs> Always right. There's never any master, the true living master, I mean the true living master, never can do wrong. You understand what I mean? Even sometimes he does, it seems like mundane or negative thing, but it's not, it's not, it's not at all. From my experience, my understanding, it's like that. But I mean the true live, living enlightened master, huh? I don't mean any so-called master, then you have to check. Huh? Not because everybody just go by people or wear nice dress and, <laughs> and they say, oh, he's enlightened, he, he's not attached. It's not true. Non-attachment has to come together for, with enlightenment from inside. You know, not only is everybody's imitate any of master, any master style, you know, we think, oh, this is the same. It's not the same. Because sometimes if we do not know how to compare with a, a true master, it's, it's sometimes we, we get misled, misleading also. But once we know the true, real, living one, oh, doesn't matter where we go, we, we will always come back, because there's nothing better. So most of the time we have trouble when we're newly initiated and especially when our level is not very high. If our level is very high, just see the Master, we already know immediately. No, no doubting, no questioning, nothing, no more searching, finished. But sometimes our level is not high, so we search around, then we have to come back anyhow. <laughs> yeah, if you cannot get better here, you won't get better anywhere, <laughs> because it's your own level, right? <laughs> There was some of the disciples, American disciples, before, just initiate newly. And they also seemed to like me very much. The, 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 the kind of clinging love, you know, that's really very tiring for people. So I gave them a few scolding words or two. Yeah? That you should not cling too much and, and in the ex at the expense of all other disciples and make trouble for me. And it's not good for you. So they probably feel that I don't love them enough. <laughs> I went and searched for another master far away, stay there with them for about one week or so, and then come back home, gain nothing, just more headache for the fellow initiates who sit around them. <laughs> Normally they don't know that these couple went to see another master until they get many headaches for many times. 
Actually, we don't know what you've done, but where have you been? What have you done? Every, before, you don't give us headaches. So how come every time we sit next to you now, we get terrible headaches? What's wrong? What did you do anything? Where did you go? And so they have to confess that <laughs> we have just come back from a so-called another master and stay there for one week retreat. One week retreat supposed to boost you, to lift you up, and make you an angel. One week retreat to bring your headaches to other people. That is not the way. And even they let the, that master bless them on the head and that. That's why. So, and uh, in the in the diary, I told you, don't don't just let people bless your head if it's not your master. And I I, I told you already. And if you want to try it, you might do it <laughs> at your expense. But sometimes it's not you alone involved because you uh, go to group meditation and you get contact with other people and then you, you, you infect, infect them, in, infest them with, with, with your negative power. That's when trouble people and trouble me, you know? Not that I don't let you go anywhere and do whatever you want. You do what you want. It's your life. Whether you go to heaven or go to hell it doesn't concern me, right? I go to heaven anyhow. I don't want to go to heaven. I bring heaven here. Everywhere I go, I have it, so I don't lose it. So it's just the same like in the car today, you know, one of the attendants said to me, Oh, Master, now you told me all this about my past life and all this. Oh, I feel terrible. I don't want to go back again. I'll definitely not come back again. Life is so suffering. Even now, I never mind before. Sometimes you still feel, you know, the past pulling. So I say, okay, if you don't want to come back, you don't come. And then she say, oh, yeah, but I come back. Never mind. If you come back, I come back. I don't mind. <laughs> I say, okay, it's good. I said, because if you go to heaven, what, what is good there? I tell her, what's good anyhow? We go to heaven every day. We eat and drink and dance and have happy new year every day. So what, what is the fun? What is there? Huh? So it's better that we bring heaven. You know, we retain heaven into our heart and bring it everywhere we go. In that case, we never lose it, and we always have heaven, and sometimes can help other people who don't have heaven. Better we share the heaven with people instead of just running over there and rest there and, and enjoy. That's what I told her. And so she understood, and I hope all of you understand too. So keep your heaven and share it with other people. Don't try to run away from your, ob from your obligation. Just live, hmm? because we live in heaven. Hmm? We have always heaven, right? Sometimes there is some little obstacle, some little surface uh, kind of uh, obstacle or, or problem, but, but let it be, let it be. Just like sometimes we have runny nose, right? Oh, we have a little spot here and there, spoil our beauty, but well, let it be. Yeah? Try our best to put something on it, if, it, if it's possible. If not, this is okay. Surrender. When I first came to Thailand, because they uh, make the house in a rush, they forgot to put the, the net door, the net, uh, the screen door. So all the mosquitoes came to me and have a good uh, New Year festival. <laughs> And I told them, it's okay, you can sting on my feet and all that, where the people don't see, but don't sting my face. But when I first came, I didn't know they were going to make a festival on my face, so I didn't tell them. Later I told them, so now they only sting down here. You see that? <laughs> Very good. I said, down here you can, <laughs> you can do it and not on my face. I said, my face is very expensive. Don't do it again. So they won't do it now. But when I first came, oh, oh, they tried to improve my face with all kind of different marks, small, big, red and blue, <laughs> red. And the disciple invited me for kind of a, what? Shandanjie, Christmas, Christmas party. I said, how can I go with my face like this, look like chicken box <laughs> or turkey box? And they said, oh, never mind, Master, we have very good medicine. You just put it on and it disappear. Yes, they disappear, okay, but two weeks later, <laughs> Not not two days. <laughs> when I have to go to the party, I still have to go with all the pops. pops. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, with a little bit of makeup, you know, you cover a little bit so I don't look so bad. It look like a half chicken pox only, but not full. <laughs> <clears throat> and now the mosquitoes are very nice. They just sting down there where, where people don't see me. 
with the screen door is much better now. But sometimes I sit outside, you know, in the garden, and they still take the opportunity to make a disco or <laughs> party out of my body. <laughs> so you see, even if we have this kind of problem, and sometimes we cannot avoid it, yeah? Yes, sometimes we cannot avoid it, so we try to uh, take whatever uh, remedy to correct it, if it if it's possible. But sometimes you still have to wait for the time for it to correct, and also your fate and your karma and the karma of other people you live around you. So, so you cannot always avoid it. But that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that our heaven is not there. You know what I mean? As I told you, just like a beautiful girl, and sometimes she has a little spot of fever, and the spot will bust out. But that will heal, you know. That will heal, and her beauty will remain. So we don't worry about where we live, what we do, and what happened to us. We should always remember we have heaven inside, and that never go away, never ever. Every time we forget, try to remember again. Pour, pour yourself inward again, and then you feel such a peace, tranquility, and comfort that no one can ever take it away from you. That is a real heaven, not to run away above the stars the way I sung to you last night. That is only for the non-initiated. <laughs> All of the, you know, kind of a not very high level practitioners. In the beginning, we have to tempt them with some kind of cakes or something. I say, oh, I have a heaven. <laughs> You're sure there, there are heavens. But like every other place, Nirvana, heaven, is not for you to uh, uh, reside uh, permanently. It's not private property. Nothing in the universe should be a private property or permanent residency, thing like that, because it's no good. Then you're stuck there. Even if you have a beautiful Nirvana, you stay there all the time. What a boring Buddha! Huh? Attached, <laughs> attached to Nirvana, no? Then we will scold him. He say, "You should go down and learn with Master Ching Hai first. <laughs> no, it is a joke. Don't tell other Buddhas, okay? <laughs> I mean, don't tell the Buddhas. Don't tell other wooden Buddhas. All right, I think I have talked to you enough, huh? Okay. Do you have any good question? After this, mm, you don't. Would be best. Otherwise, <laughs> I have no help for you. <laughs> After all this enlightening talk, and you still have questions, then <laughs> then you don't need to sit here anymore. <laughs> okay. So, is there any next program? No, huh? Get ready to go, right? Huh? Who who is the, the the boss of this program? Nobody tell me anything more. When to stop? What to do? I cannot sit and talk for three hours. One or two hours enough. Ah, oh, thank you, huh? Thank you for coming. It's not enough to listen to me, put it into practice, think about it, hmm? and analyze with your own understanding so that it becomes digested and yours, become yours. Yes, okay. <laughs> In that case, you, you truly understand something. Otherwise, just listen and say, Oh, Master, come back, talk to us again. I can talk to you a hundred years, it's no use. <laughs> so, <laughs> I wish you a safe journey home, wherever country you will go. And we see each other again for sure, physically, or if not, inside. Hmm? Okay? The Master look after you since you were inside here, so don't worry. You cannot run away. <laughs> okay? Whoever does time to come to me, we have connection already. Okay? We have to look after you, see to your safety until you come. Because otherwise the negative will take you away. Now I want to see you. So the angel and all that have to protect you before you come, before your actual initiation. They have to protect you. Hmm? 
and protect you again more afterward until you die. <laughs> Yet the end is also like that. <laughs> But I only mean physical, huh? I don't mean we ever die, huh? we never die, huh? So, so, uh, uh. I'll look at you and then go home. Ah, I know, you don't have enough, but do you ever have enough? <laughs> huh? It's good that I look different all the time, huh? You don't recognize me today? Somebody say they don't recognize me. Do you recognize me? Now you do, huh? When I first come, you recognize? No. Really? Different, huh? That's good. So you're not attached to my form. <laughs> they don't think, oh, the Master Ching Hai is like this or like that, you know. But today we were talking to... And I said, oh, all this clothing make me tired. Why don't we just wear the monk's robe again? She said, oh yes, I just thinking about that today also. <laughs> and then, you know, the shaven head is very convenient and cool. <laughs> Never mind, maybe, maybe we still change. Yeah. When I get about 70 years old, no more, no, please, I'll shave my head and leave home. <laughs> I will leave home one day <laughs> again. Yes. Because we're always repeating, repeating our... our our life anyhow, so I can repeat him, be a monk again. Huh? What? Initiation. Initiation? Uh, I don't know when we stay. How long will you stay? The initiated people, how long? How many? Raise your hand. Okay, okay. Tonight. How about tonight? So that you can go home early. Okay? Tonight, okay? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you from which country here? Thailand. Thailand don't understand English? Lousy. Okay, never mind. You learn the language of Buddha, it's better, huh? Uh Taiwan Ren uh Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, etc. All of you have a good journey. Okay, have a close look. Five hundred dollars each. <laughs> so you like my dress? It's only Thai dress. Very simple. Beautiful. Cheap. How much? Fifty dollars? Fifty. Uh, 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 everybody wear this in Thailand. No, they don't wear them because it's too cheap. So, yeah, they wear more expensive. So this is very common, common, common dress in Thailand. Fifty baht. Fifty baht means fifty NT. NT. Ah, it's about two lama. It's about two. Ah. How much dollar? How much dollar? Two dollars. Two U.S. dollars. <laughs> if you want, I sell right now for two hundred thousand dollars. You want? <laughs> okay. Hala, just show you. You men, that two U.S. dollars. You men, so much like, so much so beautiful. Ah, we want that go to the gym for a long time. I show you how easy it is. Don't get caught. 你们唱歌，我就往我马上就观音了。有什么了不起？要唱歌给我听，开玩笑。在那个那个Superstar面前，要想唱歌给我听。One of the Taiwanese person wanted to say that the uh, all of the Chinese here sing a song for me. I say, forget it. This, <laughs> this song I heard many times already. Besides, they want to sing a song in front of a superstar like me. What do you think? <laughs> I say, they must be joking. You <laughs> <laughs> 
，我的才华，你还敢呀唱歌？听，开玩笑嘛，笑话。好了，你们说我衣服那么漂亮啊？两块美金呐、啊、，two two dollars American dollars. Yes, and you say it's beautiful. It's not the clothes, it's you. So you have to practice well, and when you're inner, you have inner beauty. Whatever you wear is beautiful, because you always think I wear very expensive clothes, and that's why I'm beautiful. It's not true. Ah,、uh, this one is about maybe one or two dollars. It's fake, you know. It's a glass bead. This one also is not much, and the 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 the, the Thai dress. This people, the Thai people don't even want to wear it because it's too cheap. <laughs> uh, two uh, two American dollars only also look good. It's it's not the clothes. I can wear anything and still look good, because it's me. <laughs> A superstar Shanghai. Ah, <laughs>、uh, actually, I'm very humble. You know that. <laughs> Only when I'm with you, I become so arrogant. Sorry, this is what? Ah, Taiwan. I think today is Taiwan turning Taiwan. Only when I'm with you, I become so arrogant. Sorry, this is what? Ah, Taiwan. I think today is Taiwan turning Taiwan. Only when I'm with you, I become so arrogant. Sorry, this is what? Ah, Taiwan. I think today is Taiwan turning Taiwan. Only when I'm with you, I become so arrogant. Sorry, this is what? Ah, Taiwan. I think today is Taiwan turning Taiwan. Only when I'm with you, I become so arrogant. Sorry, this is what? Ah, Taiwan. I think today is Taiwan turning Taiwan. Only when I'm with you, I become so arrogant. Sorry, this is what? 捡社会的垃圾，<笑>是我们专业的工作。<笑>然后里面的地方有什么贫穷的人啊，就自己中心一起合钱来帮忙。因为我快没钱了，告诉你啊，这这一年啊，没多数国家都有那个那个水灾啊、火灾啊，什么什么灾都有了，<笑>天灾天灾地灾都有。我快没钱了。嗯，不要给了，不要给了，你给我还是给出去，<笑>不然你们自己给就好了，省得麻，省得麻烦。我意思说，你们自己国家要自己照顾好啊，因为有有一些国家既然还不错，不过还是有贫穷的人，在我们隔壁，我是在很远的地方，我们不知道的。啊，如果去玩玩啊，看看啊，懂吗？我是。打电话问问看呢，哪一边有真的贫穷的人？因为其实有一些很很很热的国家，有时候也很冷，冬天很冷，而是不同的地方会很冷。像这边泰国哈，他们国家是蛮好啦，经济不困难什么。不过有一些住很偏僻的地方啊，很少数的人啊，啊，冬天很冷，没有没有棉被耶，没人来那边照顾。所以这这种最需要的最。紧急的，隔壁啊，我们要照顾啊。其实隔壁很远，也要去找，还是隔壁啊，是吗？我们都是一样的同胞啊，不管哪一个国家了，去哪里看到就帮忙嘛哈、啊。昨天人那个记者问我的目的是什么，我说还有什么目的吗？<笑>是吗？看到人困难就要帮忙，还在那边问什么目的？我在那边还忙，不会想到什么目的呢？我想了好久啊，我一想半天呢、啊。啊！我太熟了，以后我才知道啊，原来有一个目的的，<笑>我发明一个目的出来了，啊！不过他已经走了，<笑>啊！如果他要一个目的，就说，因为我要世界大家快乐嘛，大家平等嘛，有多的人就给有少的人，这样大家都高兴快乐，那个给的人也很高兴啊，你们试看看啊，给东西很过瘾啊。我常常如果有空的时候，我来跟头强的啦。<笑>我说让我让我给让我给。就<笑>是我们是给人家快乐，我们自己也觉得很舒服，好像负好责任这样子。啊，像我们弟弟或是妹妹，他病很痛苦，我们能救他，我们是不是很很过瘾很快乐啊？同样嘛，没有没有任何界限呢、啊。我不会对我家庭比对你们，我是对比那些贫穷好啊。其实我对贫穷的人比对你们好啊，有时候也是讲坦白啊。但是像有时候你们想哇师傅手，我是想包包，这个很难呐、啊，是不是？啊难得哈，所以大家讲那么齐齐啊，连先生太太旁边都齐在一起，一说忘记了，太太插在旁边呃插在先生的脚上面，为了要骑到前面来，当当当当，啊这个有看到，啊不会让啦，好
。那、啊、为了什么？因为很难得能够抱师傅，我是摸师傅手啊。不过那些贫穷的人，我抱他们，我不会考虑的。那上一次我我我,我有时候我会会那个会会会注意到自己的行为，怎么会这样子嘛？因为平常我不我很不喜欢摸人啊、碰人啊等等，怎么就看到那些贫穷的人，那抱也没关系耶，啊抱在一起耶，哎。我是像那些犯人，像花莲那边有花莲，那些犯人就没人要看的，很严重那些那个杀人无数那种，在花莲有没有？因为师傅出来，他们才能够出来听经，不然有时候不能出来的，没人看人的。我还是包他们啊，我不觉得怎么样啊！你们那么干干净净的菩萨，<笑>衣服那么漂亮，我为什么不想包呢？我也觉得奇怪，我说我才问四者，我说怎么会奇怪这样呢？我平常不是很很很不喜欢摸人吗？连握手的那些外面的人握手，有时候不想握哎，我又爱干净又又不喜欢这样啊！我不晓得为什么不喜欢。我、哦、碰到任何贫穷人，我我就冲过来包，人家还没要也包，<笑>我不好意思，以后我又问他们呢。以后我就问他们，你你你会不会在意包我一下？<笑>啊，不问的话是不礼貌嘛，是不是啊？我忘记了那个时候就忘记了，我穿干净衣服我也忘记了，他们穿很肮脏啊，平常的衣服我忘记，我看到他们就觉得好爱好爱啊，不包不行这样，奇怪。嗯、你们也许要穿品种。<笑><笑>不会，我能看得出来，我知道那种脸呢、啊，不是品种，他<笑>、啊、是第第一瓶的莲花，第一第二瓶的菩萨了。嗯，好了 ，OK， 就这样子哈。嗯、啊。哦、oh, ，我自己讲就好了。<笑>那个还有有一些地方有越南难民嘛，有没有？顺、oh, 便把他们包括在内，很贫穷的人。过年呐、啊，那个。那个我们亚洲的过年啦、啊，因为越南人也跟中国一样过一样的年，所以呢，快到过年的时候，呃，有那个越南难民的国家哈，你你们联络苗栗啊，如果你们自己没有经济的话，联络苗栗就送一些钱，你们买一些东西，啊，过年嘛，因为他们常常那边，即使有政府都有照顾，不过有时候他们也喜欢一点额外的东西，也不是简单，他们没钱可以买多东西，买巧克力啊，买什么他们最喜欢的。我是他们冷什么都买一点这个小棉被什么给他们，好吗？嗯嗯，没有钱的话联络师傅啊，联络苗栗呢就对了，我会批准了，然后你们就买一点东西给他们，几千没关系，几千人没关系，一人一份 ，OK， 就这样子了，好啦，再见。贫穷的人也是这样，真的很贫穷，才才帮助，不是多余去去去搞功德出来，听得懂吗？那太恶心的了。最贫穷的真没人帮助了，不够不够温暖了，就不够吃了，就过年我们去早餐，哪一个村那没人照顾，真的最少过年就买一点点他们东西，一点一个棉被或者走玻璃、饼干什么啦。OK， 好，我我走了。